Hello everyone. We're here today to talk about pressure and release. This segment is going to deal with the flight zone and how we can use that in handling animals better. With that, we'll start with a diagram that will hopefully give you some ideas of where these uh, zones of an animal are and how they relate to what you're doing with that animal. As you see around the outside, we have a, a zone uh, marked as pressure zone, and these are normally an egg-shaped area, which to me, I think of it as maybe a bubble around the animal, and you as the stock person will have a bubble around you as well. Inside that, you can see the flight zone marked, which uh, is the area that you would need to stay out of or definitely not be in very long. With that, on the sides we have the areas where normally our handling will be done and we can uh, work along those zones on either sides of the animal, uh, either forward or backward of the animal to get the response that we desire. As you see coming uh, out in front of the animal, there's an angle there that they can have what we call is a depth of perception area that they can use. Uh, they can see the, the length, they can tell the, the distance between themselves and anything coming to them. And coming out behind them is an area that you need to stay out of because they cannot see you. You do not want to pressure directly from behind the animal if you cannot see at least one of their eyes towards the side and around the animal where you can see at least one of their eyes is a good area to pressure. This is in a feedlot pen situation and we're going to empty this feedlot pen with the uh, help of the manager and one of his helpers. Uh, what we're doing here is we're going to find the spot where we want to start the movement toward the gate. Uh, sometimes people have difficulty in, in emptying these pens and it takes three, four, five people to do it. It can easily be done with one as you can see here. It takes a very short time to do it and Animals don't want to turn around and come back if they are put out of the feedlot pen correctly, any pen for that matter. One of the things that you need to be sure that you're doing here is reading the animal and responding or reacting to what that animal's telling you. Uh, animals are always projecting um, an idea or uh, telling you whether what you're doing is good or bad and so with that you need to react accordingly so that you get a positive response from the animal. You can see I just uh, I pressure in, back out and as I get the response I want then I turn to the next animal and we unload the feed plot pin rather quickly. In fact, I had to move the camera quickly to catch those first animals going out. I didn't even realize he was going to do it so quickly. And you can see the animals in the background going on down into the, in, down the alley. They're not even thinking about coming back out. In that last clip, you saw where uh, everything went pretty well right. And in this next clip, we're going to show how things can go wrong simply from a person not reading what the animal is telling you. So with that, we'll take a look here at this clip and I'm just driving some calves through the gate. Everything's going well and I have a temporary lapse and don't pay attention to what's going on. I'm not focused and aware of what the cattle are doing and was one of those places where I had thought I had the gate closed before I did and then that's what, the, uh, that's what you get. Here we're going to show how we can do it right and you pay attention and you don't have those kinds of problems because when you pay attention to the animal, read the animal, react to what it's telling you, then you get a good result each and every time.